Biomed grad student Raul Gupta shares a tiny studio apartment on the 16th floor of this upscale high-rise with girlfriend Taylor Gold, a physics researcher for the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. The young couple and Raul's good friend, Georgetown Law student Mark Wall, are out on the town in Washington, D.C.'s trendy DuPont Circle. It started as a happy occasion. It was a birthday celebration for Rahul Gupta. Another friend, Josh White, joins the group at a local bar to celebrate the occasion. It's a night of hearty laughs and heavy liquid consumption. Rahul's topped off the booze with some earlier hits from the bong. There's a lot of drinking going on by, by all of the parties involved. It was considerable, especially, uh, you know, in Miss Gold's case. Just before 2 a.m., Josh heads home, while this security video shows Mark, Raul, and Taylor returning to the couple's Silver Spring apartment. You see them come in together, and, you know, they're, they're like any three young people who've been out. They've been at the bars, and they're acting a little intoxicated, but there doesn't appear to be the kind of tension that's going to erupt. But something goes terribly wrong once they're inside the apartment. Montgomery County 911. Taylor makes a call to 911. One could hardly call it frantic. Do you need police, fire, or medical? Um, please. In fact, Taylor is disturbingly vague. My, my friend is, um, I just, he's, he's here and I, I need emergency right now. Okay, what is going on that you need the police? What is happening? I don't know. Taylor, why did you call 911? What's going on? Nothing. You're not answering my questions, so I need to talk to somebody who will. What, what, do you want, what do you want me to answer for? I need you to tell me why you called, so I can make sure I'm sending the correct help. There would be long pauses on the 911 where she just wouldn't answer at all, or she would just give the same answer over and over again. The way that you've been answering questions, something's not right. You need to tell I'm, me I'm sorry. what is happening. I don't know. I just need someone here. There's blood okay, everywhere. How do you, what do you mean there's blood everywhere? What, what happened? I don't know. Who is bleeding? I don't know. I just want someone here. What does the 911 call tell you? It was very disturbing. It was nine to ten minutes long. What I think that was as long as anything that happened in the apartment was her 911 call. Even more perplexing, the dispatcher can hear an angry voice in the background. I don't know. Taylor, hello. Can somebody come back to the phone, please? Stop, please. Oh, I'm, I'm doing wrong. No, no. I'm doing wrong, okay? Stop. Taylor. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I need you to talk to me because I don't know what's yeah. going on and all I hear is people saying to get off of me. You hear Taylor giving very bizarre, unresponsive answers. She puts the phone down several times. She moves away from the phone. Having no idea what to expect, police race to the apartment and discover a scene of pure chaos. There was blood all over the apartment. They had Miss Gould answer the door with blood on her. They observed Mr. Gupta lying next to Mr. Wall, and then they quickly realized that Mr. Gupta was still alive. But Mark Wall would suffer a different fate lying in a bloody pool, his body riddled with stab wounds. We are talking about a person who is bathed in blood. There were defensive wounds, there were jugular injuries. He died savagely. Taylor Gold's body, blood stained. Show me the bottoms of your feet, please. Her mind, distressed. <laughs> Taylor's boyfriend, Raul Gupta, is just plain aggravated. I want to get out of here. I want to I want to poop. I want to eat. I'm hungry. They're each being interrogated at the Montgomery County Police Department. If the flash gets too bright for you, you can close your eyes. Raul's high school buddy, Mark Wall, an Eagle Scout champion debater and Georgetown law student, is dead, savagely knifed to death in the Kumpel studio apartment in Silver Spring, Maryland. There were 11 stab wounds. 
there were five or six that were the important or fatal wounds. The other five or six were characterized as defensive wounds. A night of heavy partying and utter inebriation turned deadly inside the 500 square foot efficiency. The murder occurred in a very, very small room. Uh, it, when the individuals were in this apartment, they would have been in relatively close proximity. But somehow, neither Raul nor Taylor knew what happened, or so they say, during this police interrogation. Is there even a remote possibility that you did this to Mark and you don't remember? I can't imagine hurting someone like that. If I wanted to stab Mark, I would have remembered every detail of it. 18-year veteran homicide detective Paula Hamill knows how to play the mental chess game that comes with interrogating witnesses, even when those witnesses are brilliant scholars. At what point do you two well-educated people say, what the f happened? Like, why is this dude dead in my apartment? Like, how did he get hurt? Or, or what's wrong with him? I don't know. Did you ask her what the happened like no, any normal I, person would be yeah. like what the happened probably should have done that yeah were they truly memory impaired blackout drunk covering for each other lying or some sort of twisted combination detective hamill hadn't yet pinned it down that had to be frustrating i really had a difficult time with her and with mr gupta because i feel like they were both so deceitful throughout the entire interview process that it made it very frustrating to try to grasp onto any little bit of truth. Detectives are going in circles trying to figure out who killed Mark Wall. This is when they try something very unique. They decide to put Taylor and her boyfriend Raul into the same interrogation room to see what would be revealed. Okay. Yeah. We wanted to see if it caused any type of spontaneous statement or utterance from either one of them with regards to what really might have happened inside the apartment. I <sighs> Mark. I did not stab him. I don't think I did either. What I happened? I don't, what? I don't know. I don't know. I'm freaking out, okay? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know what happened. Go out there and tell him that I want my lawyer. If I don't get a lawyer, then I'm going to sue. Go out there and tell him that. I touch you? No. Not right now. What did you learn by doing that? We didn't learn anything. I don't think we were any further ahead when we finished having them together than before we put them together. It's back to square one, but in time, Detective Hamill notices cracks in the armor. When is the last time that you and Tay had like consensual sex? Um, yesterday. Okay, like before you went out or? Wait, hang on. What day is it today? Well, it's Sunday now. It's Sunday, okay. So we didn't have sex yesterday, so it was Friday then. Okay. Detective Hamill asks Raul that question for a reason. She's discovered that lovebirds Raul and Taylor hadn't exactly been cooing over each other in recent months. There was a lot of tension. Uh, there was uh, some information we later gathered about the fact that Mr. Gupta and her relationship was not a completely satisfying relationship on a sexual level. Investigators wonder if that unhappy relationship may have played a part in Mark's murder. What were some of the issues in their relationship? The issues stemmed mostly from her flirtatiousness with other men and I believe their drinking. A couple of Raul's friends had had um, experiences where they believed uh, that Raul's girlfriend Taylor had been hitting on them, uh, flirting with them to the degree that they were uncomfortable. Remember Raul's bar hopping birthday gathering in DuPont Circle the night before? And the other friend, Josh White, who had joined the group for a while? Listen to what Josh told detectives about Taylor. She has a tendency to be a little flirtatious to Raul's friends. And I just asked her, like, straight up, like, what's the deal? Like, you know, you're, you're a little flirtatious. In fact, Josh says he felt Taylor was shooting some flirty vibes his way that night. He says he felt uncomfortable and unsure what to do. Well, nobody wants to say, hey, the girlfriend you're apparently very close with is hitting on your friends. 
But Taylor insists it was Josh who was making the moves on her, so she turned to Mark for advice. Josh was texting me and it was really weird and he was kind of hitting on me and... Um, Josh was? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so I told Mark, so I was kind of like, what do I do? This is Rahul's friend. I don't know what to do, so... Taylor claims she was so uncomfortable with Josh's alleged advances and the tension brewing with Raul, she just wanted to go home. There's some confusion about exactly who was flirting with who, and this resulted in a disagreement. Do you think that was a pivotal point in the evening and that's why they all decided to part ways? I do think that it broke the evening up. Josh splits from the group. Taylor and Raul leave the bar and head home with Mark tagging along. Taylor tells police Mark wanted to comfort and advise her about the flirtation issue. He wanted to like talk me through the whole Josh thing because I was like really freaking out. But some find it curious that Mark would come back to the couple's apartment just to counsel Taylor about Josh. First of all, if there had been an issue with Josh, he was now removed from the situation. And certainly there were a lot of opportunities for people to talk about this later. So why was Mark there and how did he end up dead? A young man who is a good friend of yours died a violent death inside your very small efficiency apartment. I find it very hard to believe that you didn't hear it, see it and know what happened. They're attractive, brilliant, successful 20 somethings. I touch you? I don't know what happened. But could they possibly be millennial murderers? Mark's dead. I know. I'm still trying to process that. Raul Gupta's close friend Mark Wall had been knifed to death in the apartment Raul shared with his girlfriend, Taylor Gold. Mark Wall is a wonderful young man. This is an Eagle Scout kid who's been accomplished at everything he's ever done. The Georgetown Law student had been partying with Raul and Taylor in DC's popular DuPont Circle, but that evening came to an abrupt halt. When Taylor accused another friend, Josh White, of hitting on her at the bar, causing tension with Raul. According to police, Taylor told Raul she wanted to go home and she wanted Mark to come with them. Taylor wanted to bring Mark back to the apartment because she believed he could advocate on her behalf to Rahul that she wasn't flirting with this other guy who was with them. Security cameras capture the three returning to the couple's apartment. What does that surveillance tell you? In the elevator, Mark is kind of making funny faces and um, nobody appears to be angry. Nobody appears to be fighting. But behind closed doors, a disturbing drama is unfolding. Taylor calls 911, but it's a mysterious exchange full of critical omissions. Okay, why did you call 911? Paul, well, are you okay? Stop. Taylor. I'm, I'm trying to understand what's going on. There's clearly another voice yelling in the background. It's Raul Gupta. Still, Taylor tries to convince the dispatcher she's by herself. Who else is in the house with you right now? It's just me. No, there's males in the house too. Who are they? My friend, hold on. You have a friend dying in front of you. Blood all over the place. Obviously this person has been stabbed. And you mentioned nothing about that on the 911 call? Correct, she mentioned nothing about that. And you could hear Mr. Gupta in the background yelling. So obviously her and Mr. Gupta were having some kind of an argument. When police arrive, Mark is dead. At first, the couple puts up a united front of ignorance. At some point, I woke up and I realized that, well, okay, this guy is bleeding out. Mark is dead. What? Yes. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, my God. What happened? So, that's what we're trying to find out? How, how did he die? I don't know. What clues cops can't get from Raul and Taylor, they find from the grave. Mark's cell phone reveals troubling tension in the apartment. Before he's killed, he texts a friend to a 1 a.m. quote, my night is becoming historically awkward. 2.19 a.m. quote, I'm about to gnaw my hand off so I can leave in the ambulance. 
Finally, at 2.55 a.m., awake, I need help. He was in their bathroom at the time? Yes. He made a statement about being an uh, awkward situation. And that makes me wonder if maybe Miss Gold was making some type of advances on him. Were you in bed with Mark at Absolutely all not. during the night? No. no. Did you have sex with Mark? Anything happened no. with Mark during the last no. night? Detective Hamill pushes a little harder, but now she's armed with an interesting police photograph. When the police got to your house, like you weren't wearing this, okay? They, Cause they have pictures of you. You had like a white t-shirt on and like pink like, underwear. I'm kind of surprised I wore that in front of her. Police discover another outfit, Taylor's red dress and bra that she wore out that night. And they found that red dress there, but it's got Blood stains all over it. You just can't explain that? I no. I I clearly I you know interacted with the body because I had blood on me. Right. I just don't know when it happened. Police discover strands of hair on the murder weapon in Mark's hand and stuck to the bloody wall. How is that explained, or was it ever linked back to her? As my understanding, it was a long blonde hair and the only person that had long blonde hair was Taylor's. And another curious discovery under Mark's body. When he was rolled over, still stuck to the back of his jeans on that little square of leather was a perfectly stuck, unharmed, soft contact lens that was Taylor's prescription. Still charged with nothing, Taylor's recollection of events, or lack thereof, waves serious red flags the flirtation, the unanswered questions about her hair and her contact lens, her bizarre behavior on the 911 call, and the fact that she changed clothes. She had a pair of shoes, and she had her car keys on top of the blood. And all of the pictures taken by the police support that these items had to have been put after the bloodletting. What do you think she was yeah. doing? It appears she was trying to leave the apartment. For what purpose? I can't hazard a guess. At this point, there's only one thing Detective Hamill believes for certain. I believe that she knows everything. I believe that she knows what happened, and I believe that she knows why it happened, and I believe that she saw it happen. And why she chose not to tell us, I can't explain. I don't want to speak anymore. Raul Gupta is trapped in a police interrogation room. I don't see my lawyer like this. And I explained to you that we don't keep lawyers here at the police station. But you can't just keep me here then. I can keep you here? Yes, I can in the holding cell. When do I get to go? Like, right. when do I get to sleep in a bed or take a <laughs> or eat? And here he is, he's being told by detectives that they're, your friend from childhood is dead. Mr. Gupta expresses no sadness at all. His response is he's tired, he's hungry, he wants to go home, he wants to take a shower. Perhaps Raul was expecting the Ritz, but there's no room service here in the stark steel and concrete confines of the Montgomery County Police Department. It's possible that you did it if you don't remember. I mean, you've been, you've that, you know, you know for a fact that you right, didn't but, do it, but you really don't know for a fact that you didn't if you don't remember what, what happened. I know for a fact I didn't do it. Raul Gupta and his girlfriend, Taylor Gold, were the only other people in their postage stamp-sized apartment when Mark Wall was hacked to death with a kitchen knife. Mark was stabbed 11 times. He died a very violent death, and he didn't die right away. He did die a very violent death, yes. Raul's live-in girlfriend, Taylor, insists her alcohol-saturated memory has failed her. She didn't really definitively say she didn't do it. Did you stab Mark or no? I don't think, like, I wouldn't do that. Why would I attack someone? She, in fact, said that she didn't know what had happened, that she was blacking out during the incident. And she even said that she didn't want Gupta to be accused if she had done it or if there was evidence that she had done it. Taylor's booze-induced memory loss was her boyfriend's gain. Raul sees the opportunity to weave a story rich with veiled accusations. His girlfriend, the intended target. Now, I didn't stab anyone, but as soon as I found out that Mark had been sort of punctured here, mm -hmm. I, I tried to stop bleeding. Mm -hmm. Um, I tried to give a CPR. I kept 
telling Tay to call the police, and she sort of, I don't want to say hesitated, but just right. sort of looked at us. He is explaining, he is minimizing, he is shifting blame, and he is very intelligent. So. I wasn't surprised that he made that decision. Then Raul becomes even bolder with his version of events. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, uh, something happened between Tay and Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Mark was, he was bleeding out. So I, I, I came to his sort of medical attention. I tried to stop the bleeding. It appears Taylor is being thrown under the proverbial bus. When we all, three of us, got back to the apartment, it was clear that something was going on. Okay. Like, did it be clear because, and did you see them kissing or touching no, or? No, they just. Uh, just the way they acted? Yeah, the body language. And I, and I sort of just looked the other way. And I sat down and started doing my own thing. And at some point, Mark sustained the injury. Then, Raul goes in for the kill. Listen closely. If you didn't stab him, then who did? Okay? Yeah. It was a stunning accusation. Raul Gupta ratting out his own girlfriend, putting the knife in her hand. He says he didn't do anything to him, therefore you must have done it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Raul says that he felt like something was going on with you guys. What? You screamed, you started screaming, and that he turned around and that Mark was on the ground bleeding. I mean, what reason would you have to hurt Mark? You didn't wake up to like him trying to f you. I don't. I don't remember anything. What are cops to do? They've got Taylor's blank memory, Raul's adamant denials. They're both in an alcohol fog, and there's no proof that either are lying. Blood and hair evidence is useless because both Taylor and Raul live in the apartment. I think the, the most interesting part about this case is that there was no significant material evidence that pointed to either Taylor or Rahul being the killer. Investigators comb through every detail of the case and become intrigued by one of the 11 stab wounds. This was a stab wound from the back that went seven inches into the body of Mr. Wa. It actually chipped a bone as it entered his body. It was strike one for Rahul. Miss Gold at five foot, 100 pounds, would physically incapable of having been the person delivering that blow. Then, a critical revelation. Investigators believed Gupta had the psychological wiring that could lead to murder. I know an ex-girlfriend that said that he became a different person when he was drinking. And I know that that girlfriend had roommates who wouldn't allow him to their shared house any longer because they didn't feel safe. A motive for Mark's murder now seemed easy for cops to nail. What do you think the motive was? Jealousy. 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 Then came a bombshell and a recorded jailhouse conversation between Raul and his father. What happened? Mark and I got into a fight and he tried to get a knife and then I got the knife. The phone call is a golden nugget for police and prosecutors. Raul admits to a fight with Mark, and he appears to say he got the knife. I got the knife. Then the Fort Knox of motive in the form of a telling accusation. I found out that uh, Taylor and, and Mark may have been going out or something on okay. my back. Raul Gupta is charged with murder, and during the trial, not open to cameras, he continues with his fantasy explanations. The story that he gave was so unbelievable. I mean, it was just absolutely incredible that he had bumped his head, he had fallen down, and that somehow, during the time that he was laying on the floor, an unprompted murder was committed by his inebriated girlfriend. While Raul continues to blame Taylor, she testifies for two days and does not back down from her claims of memory impairment. But Taylor never blames Raul. Then the jury hears what is potentially a nail in the coffin for Raul. According to court documents, Raul told cops when they arrived at the scene of the murder, quote, I walked in on them cheating and I killed my buddy. And I think that that was probably the most honest statement that he made that entire night. But Raul quickly recanted his confession after sobering up, claiming he was only trying to take the fall 
for his girlfriend. The wheels in his head are turning and he's coming up with a way to try and get out from under the criminal liability that he knows is coming. But even the handsome young intellect couldn't outsmart the jury. It took less than five hours to convict Raul Gupta of first degree murder, the man with the gold plated future. He was on his way to being a superstar in life. He was a brilliant, bright kid. Is now a falling star. What is his sentence? He received life. What motivated this killing was his own petty jealousies about his own inadequacies and the fact that she was looking possibly for someone else to satisfy her sexually. Raul's defense argues the jury's decision is unwarranted. Do you believe Taylor is the person who killed Mark? I don't know. Um, I believe that the evidence in the apartment about her behavior that night should have made the jury find, regardless of what they found her involvement to be, there were just too many questions about what Raul's involvement was, and he should have been found not guilty. Raul Gupta has exhausted all state appeals. His life sentence stands. Taylor has never been charged. Crime Watch Daily tracked down the woman at the center of a tragic murder, hoping to hear her story in her own words. Taylor, could you talk to us for just a moment? I'm Michelle Sagona from Crime Watch Daily. We were doing a story on the Gupta case and wanted to hear your side. But the secret will remain locked up forever, just like the man Taylor once loved. Taylor, Taylor. The fact that she wasn't charged with anything doesn't mean that I personally don't believe that she has some culpability in what happened. I just believe that her culpability doesn't rise to a level of a criminal nature, but I think it is a hard memory for her to live with for the rest of her life. Here to break down the legal aspects of this hazy case is attorney and Crime Watch Daily legal contributor, Jesse Weber. Thanks as always, Jesse, for being here. Thank you for having me. A lot of the evidence here is circumstantial. We see a lot of convictions where there's strong circumstantial evidence. The problem in this case is you have two suspects, one victim in the suspect's apartment. Their DNA, their clothing is already all gonna be all over the apartment regardless. And then you have two people that know what happened, no other witnesses. So it's gonna be he said, she said, who do you believe? The problem for Raul is those 11 stab wounds, particularly the stab wound in the back, the one that went seven inches into Mark's back. Who are you gonna believe did this? Raul, who's a pretty strong guy, or Petite Taylor? It's gonna look like Raul. Let's talk about Taylor's story here, or the lack thereof. Her story was bizarre. Her answers were bizarre. She provided a terrible performance to the police when they told her that Mark was dead. Meryl Streep would be very upset at her from looking at this. How did he die? What happened? But even despite all that, I could see why Raul was found guilty and was not acquitted. And the reason was because he didn't keep his mouth shut. Why do you think Taylor was not charged in this case? The evidence was so much more strong against Raul that he did the actual stabbing. I'm not surprised she wasn't charged for murder. I am a little surprised that she wasn't charged, at least as an accomplice, because as I said, her story was bizarre. Her answers didn't add up. She lied to the police initially about being alone in that apartment. So you could see maybe she was somehow aiding and abetting. Then again, it is about that mental state. Did she voluntarily and knowingly contribute to this crime? Did she aid in this crime? Or was she blacked out? I really think it should have been brought to a jury. She should have been charged and let them decide. A question of fact. Absolutely. Jesse Weber, as always, thank you for your insight into this case.